Thank you for your great presentation, Puan Suhaila. Very informative and very useful. Soalan pertama daripada Encik Fatah Houdin, HDA. Is, okay. PGSGA, is, is PGSGA done routinely in your setting? Yes. How frequent do you suggest to PGSGA to patient in order to monitor their nutrition status? Thank you. Okay. Usually for PGSGA, untuk PGSGA, yes, um, normally we, we sort of not routinely uh, do, tapi kita cuba buat, let's say in a month, we target maybe 10 to 15 patient. Kita buat. Because PGSGA, not all patient, not all dietitians are well trained untuk buat. And it also is a time consuming for nutritional assessment lah. Okay. So, biasanya kita akan target around a month, 10 to uh, 15 patient and basically we can monitor maybe early, early uh, before the uh, intervention and then maybe two weeks, one month after the intervention. But that's the problem because the time frame, maybe patient dah balik. Hmm. Patient, patient dah balik dah. So um, that time frame. Uh, but if let's say you want to start, maybe you can start before you give, during the assessment. At, at least kita tahu patient kat mana. Sebab kalau kita nak tengok in terms of let's say muscle mass, fat mass, dalam dua minggu, tiga minggu kadang dia tak nampak kesan. Maybe around three months, six months. So that one is uh, untuk monitoring purposes. Tapi item-item uh, dalam PGSGA tu boleh diguna pakai. Nutrition impact symptom, you know, dia punya weight loss. Uh, kita boleh guna benda tu. So it's very sebenarnya. Baiklah, harap hmm. menunggu soalan Encik Fatah Houdin tadi. Soalan kedua, is the aggregate PGSGA appropriate to be used in the clinical setting daripada Dr. Zalina UPM? Okay, actually itulah PGSGA ni dia adalah validated tapi PGSGA kebiasaannya diguna pakai uh, untuk clinical study, untuk study, untuk research memang dia pakai sebab dia dia bagi macam maklumat yang banyak kan tapi untuk clinical wise, macam kita clinical setting kita jarang, kita memang kebiasaan kita memang tak guna because it's time consuming lagi-lagi dengan this COVID, dia tak boleh nak pegang-pegang sentuh and then terlalu lama sangat, so PGSGA is a time consuming uh, dia kena train but as for me, uh, one of my task as uh, uh, SME, I need to perform the PGSGA. So PGSGA adalah antara uh, method assessment yang uh, yang akan digunakan lah. That is for me. Tapi untuk kita nak recommend untuk clinical practices, actually at least you have that knowledge to perform. And uh, kita tahu benda tu uh, macam penting untuk digunakan. Tapi untuk nak disarankan uh, that time consuming. Uh, you, the, the time consuming lah. I think that is the the barrier. But at least you know lah. You tahu macam mana nak buat, kan? Ah, uh, itu je. Okay. It, it's good to done. It's good. Hmm. Okay. More comprehensive lah. Mm -mm. Okay. Soalan ketiga. Okay. Is probiotic drinks or supplement safe uh -huh. for or radiotherapy patient from uh -huh. Rosalinda Hospital Ampang? Okay. Ah, uh, untuk probiotic eh? Ah uh ah. -uh. Okay, probiotic actually dia tak ada uh, actually uh, evidence based sangat untuk probiotic untuk kita gunakan. Uh, actually you, you nak offer patient untuk apa? Kan? Maybe untuk uh, let's say for radiation enteritis ke? Untuk diarrhea ke? So sometimes kadang-kadang kita tengok juga probiotic tu adakah betul-betul beneficial untuk patient. Because uh, for example macam certain-certain formula kadang-kadang bila dia dah dekat luar dia dah tak bagi benefit dah, kan? But if let's say untuk formula yang specific uh, yang uh, contoh macam start with H uh, maybe you can consider but you need to see what the purpose you nak kasih kat patient. What the purpose untuk uh, let's say radiotherapy untuk uh, untuk apa? Untuk apa nak bagi? Adakah nak bagi uh, untuk you nak manage that nutritional impact symptom or you nak bagi uh, untuk untuk apa. So asalkan dia tak, dia dia tak kiranya ada that purpose, saya rasa dia tak menjadi isu. Boleh. Let's say kalau patient nak ambil sikit boleh, tak ada masalah. 
Tapi you need to assess the patient Takut patient ada ada benda-benda lain yang tak membolehkan Especially untuk patient yang BMT kan, bone marrow transplant kan Any uh, microorganisma yang live ni kita tak kasih sangat untuk patient So kena tengok uh, cancer patient macam mana type So soalan seterusnya Puan mm -hmm. In HSCT, why uh, why recommended for low fiber from time shipping UKM? Oh actually uh, that is um actually that is based on patient toleration. Kita bukannya recommend. Kadang-kadang lepas patient undergoing transplant, kadang nak makan dia, dia, that, that progression dia takkan terus makan sayur banyak-banyak kan? So uh. actually that is only the statement. The progression of the diet uh, boleh kita amalkan. Selalu kadang patient akan start dengan makan, uh, kadang dia, dia makan bubur, bubur dengan protein ke uh, bukan kita suggest, it's just a progression. That one is basically based on studies dan kebanyakan even kita pun, kita punya masyarakat sayur tak makan banyak pun. Uh, uh, kita bukan bukan suggest, it's just that uh, the progression of the diet. Usually patient akan ambil low fiber, low fat kan dan subsequently dia akan progress to this a uh, normal diet. Okay, for last question, hmm? uh, based on your reading, how is uh -huh. uh, how is nutrition based formula such as uh -huh. omega 3 arginine uh -huh. beneficial for upper GI cancer patient? Is it more preferred formula to suggest for the for this patient uh -huh. from Karudin Abu Zahar Johor? Okay, for upper GI, yes, upper GI, yes. Uh, untuk immune, immune nutrition but please uh, calculate untuk uh, EPA. EPA is only 2 gram per day. So kebanyakan formula yang available, ambil 2 gram is only like 2 bottles. So 2 bottles kadang-kadang tak sampai pun dia calorie, 500 calorie. So sometimes let's say you want ONS up to 1000. So uh, that one you kena tengok betul-betul. Uh, kita, kita tak boleh kasih macam If kita nak bagi this immune nutrition, you need to calculate the EPA because high intake of EPA, kita tak nak ada bleeding, tak nak ada intolerance, tak nak ada masalah-masalah yang lain. Problem dengan immune nutrition ni because dia punya added tu. Apa GI? Yes. Apa GI? Yes, we do recommend. Tapi tak semua uh, tempat ada this immune nutrition kan. So uh, if let's say you want Calculate that that EPA, that recommendation. Sometimes bila kita kata bagus, rice tube pun kita ambil dah sampai berbotol-botol dah. So takut pengambilan EPA tu more than the recommended. Ha, because kita tak ada this upper limit tolerable untuk this omega or fish oil. But uh, according to my reading, 5 gram lah ikut European food safety. Tapi even the product developer pun tak berani untuk nak suggest sampai 5 gram per day.